Tonight on Bondi Rescue, grab on, grab on. a romantic swim nearly ends in tragedy. I was thinking I'm gonna die or something, you know? Lost, a little boy in a big storm. Well, the kids are screaming out for his dad, but he doesn't want me to get near him. Maxi learns the hard way. And a drug bust on the beach. He was the one with the drug stop, me. Looking after the millions of visitors to Australia's busiest beach requires special skills. There are no shortcuts to becoming an elite waterman. Most of Bondi's 35 lifeguards were born and bred at the beach. Honing their skills takes years of training. Harry's, Australia's fastest soft sand runner. My mother can't swim, so they wanted us to be good swimmers and good on the beach. So th th this has become a, you know, a lifelong dream. Popo, a legend on the surf ski. Started out down at Bronny, learning the surf through the nippers, and then a couple of the older guys used to ride the wave skis down there and used to jump on that when it was about 14, 15, then progressed into the surf ski paddling from there and been doing that for 20 years. Bisho, an Australian belt swimming champion. I've been in the water my whole life. From age of two, I think my father threw me in the water, and from then on, I just basically had a, a love of the ocean. Today, senior lifeguard Corey Adams is passing his skills down the generations. How come you got your haircut like that? He went into the barber and uh, she said, oh, so what sort of haircut do you want, Cash? He went, oh, I want a haircut just like my dad. <laughs> At five, young Cash can swim like a fish. Now, it's time to learn to surf. That's it, up you get. Get up now, buddy, up you get. But Cash is about to get more than a lesson in surfing. Whippet has spotted a swimmer going nowhere against a rip. If you are having trouble returning to shore, raise your arm and someone will come to assist you in getting back to the beach. Corey, you need to check on that too. Yeah. Despite being off duty, Corey is closest and need, goes to check. You think you need a hand? But the woman refuses any assistance. As Cash continues his class, lifeguards keep their eye on the swimmer. After a few minutes, she still made no progress back to shore. Central to whip. Corey Adams is out there now on the rescue board with his son. I think he's just having a word to her. Corey checks once more. You think you need a hand? Just hold on to the board. Have a little rep. This time, she accepts the offer. It's a little bit harder than you think, isn't it? You think you're so close to shore and you just go nowhere. We'll just float across to this little bank here and we'll get in. Hold on. First rescue. Now it seems that Cash is his rescue here, taking in his father's footsteps, which is good. You jump on. I think Corey's going to push him down a wave here too. Yeah, <laughs> no, I threw her off. Cash has notched up his first rescue. That's one for Cash. One for Cash. You're welcome. I just want to go for a swim, but yeah, then I looked to the beach and it was too far. I think I, I could do it myself, but it was good that someone can. Yeah. All right, step off. He's pretty game for his age. There's none of his mates that get out as far out as he does, you know, which can be a little bit of a worry too, but it doesn't seem to worry him. You didn't see any other five-year-olds out there, did you? No. Nope. No, you're the only five-year-old out there? No. Nope. Pretty brave, hey? In a year's time, Cash will join a local surf club as a nipper and work his way up through the ranks. Sharks, guys! Has anyone heard the shark alarm at Bondi? Yes. What does it sound like? Most of the kids in Australia generally grow up on the coast, so they're either involved in nippers or surfing and at the beach, it's sort of a common pastime. And they just sort of progress through the ranks into surf life saving or as a surfer. And yeah, they're interested in being a lifeguard and working on the beach. How do you become a lifeguard? Go through the surf club first, finish nippers, 
And then you've got to get all the qualifications, which is a jet ski driver's licence, a first aid certificate, advanced resuscitation, and your car driver's licence. But we need more girl lifeguards because we've only got one at the moment. And we're here every day. So if you ever need any help, come and look for Ryan or myself or up in the tower, and we'd be only too happy to help. With the formalities over, the nippers get to practice one of the great rituals of the beach, the old-fashioned art of breadcrumbing. With Bondi at its picture postcard best, thousands of tourists flock to the south end, close to buses and local hostels. Despite repeated warnings, many visitors haven't got a clue they've chosen to swim at the most dangerous part of the beach. actually know what to do. They get themselves out of trouble, they get themselves back onto the sandbank. But the tourist isn't trained. So that's how they end up tired and we have to go and get them. Today, conditions at the south end are especially dangerous. Well, the soil's basically on straight towards the icebergs, so it's kind of pushing them straight in and the rip's taking them straight out. Head lifeguard Hoppo spots a group of swimmers struggling in the surf. He's on his own and needs urgent backup. On the central to Rhino, yeah, you're gonna have to get down south. There's four heads stuck right on the side of the icebergs. Grab one, grab one. Hoppo sees one swimmer going under and races to get her before the next wave. Grab on, grab on, quick! Before this wave, quick grab it! Hold on, hold on. Here we go, hold on. The exhausted woman is a dead weight. Pulling her onto the rescue board is almost impossible. Luckily, they drift onto a sandbank. Her friend helps her onto the board. She's safe on land. But Hoppo has other concerns. Right. She swallowed much water. She, she said she swallowed a bit. Is that all right? You all right? Yeah. Just sit there for a minute and see if you feel. Yeah, feel sick, I think, in the stomach. Yeah? Feel sick in the stomach at all? Something wrong the stomach? No. Nothing? Yeah. Right. Saar and her scared. boyfriend Sam had been struggling in the rip for some time, but they hadn't signalled for help. Well, they were holding her for 10 minutes. I saw, I saw he was going. I don't know whether you're just you're hanging on to each other or... Unbelievable. Just put your arm, next time Thanks, just put your arms straight up and then we know. Because we thought you might have just been floating yeah. around as well. Okay. Thanks, mate. Same so you got to the bad spot, we knew you were no good. Oh, I didn't know the bad spot. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Sam grew up in Turkey and Sarah's from Thailand. They were never taught the dangers of the surf. Suddenly it's going down. The sand is finished, like, this water. Can't do anything. And uh, I was trying to hold her, like, ten minutes. I get tired because waves keep coming. Can't handle it. Just go down. I was thinking I'm gonna die or something, you know. I'm worrying him too. I ask him, are you okay? Because I'm I'm tired and I put him to death and I try to like. Both know how close they were to drowning. Because maybe three seconds we shock. I'm drowning, not three seconds. After that, can't handle it. That's it. All worked out well in the end, but I mean, it could have been a, a tragic ending, really, but it ended up a good ending. Each week, Bondi's youngest ever lifeguard, Maxi, builds confidence as his rescue tally increases. Meanwhile, Blake, now in his second season, has notched up over 50 rescues. Troy, at 20, is the veteran of the group. In his third year, he's lost count of the rescues he's done. The old sea dogs have watched the young pups form a tight knit unit. It's costing me a fortune in colour in books. Young guns, mate. The young guns. Hey, matchbox cars and colour in books is really wasting me old wage. Stay yeah. sweet with the kids. Young guns. 
they're getting a bit too cocky. Just kids who get a bit of the limelight, start doing a few rescues. And they've got schedules made up, young guns training sessions. I think they're going to take over. I think they're going to take over the world. On a quiet day, Blake and Maxie decide it's a perfect opportunity to practice some rescue drills. There's two of the young guns down here. It's, it's probably good to be training together that way. We're kind of getting it up on the older guys. We're not helping them out if as we train up, well. it doesn't matter. Yeah, they're always watching us when we're down here, so kind of get used to it a bit, but definitely always happier not to stuff up. <laughs> they're just doing some pickup training. What we mean by that is they're doing live pickup training with taking turns of picking each other up. We also got a heavily weighted mannequin dummy that we simulate with a dead weight rescue, and that's really hard work. Yeah, it's supposed to weigh 40 kilos, but it's a dead weight, 40 kilos, so it's very heavy. I mean, it's hard enough on dry land, let alone on water when you're trying to push up off nothing. It's quite difficult to get up on the mat. And I'm sure Maxie will show us how, just how difficult it is. <laughs> Maxie struggles to pull the 40 kilo dummy onto the rescue mat. It's not exactly a textbook rescue. Almost on, but then definitely off. <laughs> the boys swap over, but as Maxi radios the tower, there's a problem. Central to the jet ski, you want us, Maxi? What's he doing, mate? Wave his arm. I didn't copy one word of that, mate. You muffled ass. Give me another radio check, mate. We need to sort the radio out. Nah, terrible, mate. You might want to bring it up. You can get called a rescue now, mate. Poor radio communication doesn't impress the old guy. Oh, yeah, these small things are the things that it's going to be a difference between someone yeah. saving their lives or not. Yeah. Communication is the number one. So what's happening here? Start the road. Maxi's let water into the radio, a vital and expensive piece of equipment. Terry uses some old school know how to fix it. I don't let any of these young guys see any of this stuff because, like, until I get it properly working. You know, the old tradesmen, they don't give away too much. You know, these young guys, they come along and think they know it all. They might be fitter and faster, but it's upstairs where it counts. <laughs> Bondi is just 10 kilometres from Sydney's CBD. It's where the city meets the sea, where inner city grunge meets Bondi Bohemia. It's also where big city vices come to the beach. Yeah, just, we just need about five minutes of your time. Yeah. Tom investigates a disturbing report from a parent. Then he took his jeans off and something fell out of the back pocket, right? And then he put his jeans down and he went into the water. Yeah. When he went into the water, I thought, go over and I'll see what it is. And it was a syringe in a packet. I thought if there was one in a packet, he might have used ones yeah, I, on him. Definitely. So it could be very... Definitely. If that slips lethal. out and gets in the sand and then, you know, some poor kid steps on it. Yeah. It's now a police matter. Thaney calls in a local patrol. The suspect is in the water, so Tom leads police to his mate. Hey, that other guy went back in the water, so... Lifeguards have lost sight of the suspect. Perhaps he has seen the police. Bondi Central Thaney, have you got a visual on the guy in the water at the moment? I'm trying to find him, mate, so not yet. If he just wants to stand by, just keep watching. Copy, mate. I'm just trying to look for the person who's drowning the most. Off Finally, a positive ID.
Okay, we're walking with us, mate. Police are about to search the belongings of a man reported with drugs on the beach. The search reveals what appears to be a bag of marijuana. Hey, is this stage you're under arrest? The possession of the drugs, are they yours? No. They were in your pants, mate. Here, yeah, walls in the water. Okay, mate, at this point, it's, you don't have to start doing yeah. it. Do you understand that? Anything you say I do can be used in the evidence, you understand that? Fair enough, if I had it on me, you can accuse me, but when I'm in the water, and my stuff's there, you can't just go accusing people now. That could be anyone's. I just came here for a swim for the day, that's all I've done. Mm -hmm. I'm stressing out because I was in the water and, you know, I just came out and bang. Are you bringing syringes on? No. Can I at least get one of them smokes, please? You're not, you're under arrest at the moment. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. And then drugs aren't mine, mate. I was 100 miles here up in the water and I get set up here in the queues. All that I was walking. Mate, stand over against See the wall. See what I mean? What do you threaten me to do? Sit and have a, uh, sit and have a laugh and a giggle and be happy? You know what I mean? It's not my stuff, mate. It's not my stuff, mate. You know, hopefully this all gets sorted out. We do have a couple of hot spots around Bondi Beach and, you know, you are going to get people who do double in that kind of stuff and they are going to come down here and you're going to get situations like this. Then his mate asks police to retrieve $100. He says the man owes him. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Mate, no, I don't owe you $100. Smash you, you... I get accused and he walks. You're a dog. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cave your head. I'll end up for murder, mate. I kind of saw that in my head going a little bit differently than that. He tried to set me up while he started walking. He was the one with the drug stop, me. You saw him. You saw him sitting there, mate. You saw him. You were sitting with my stuff. Was I sitting there? Watch your head. Watch your head. Focus on. Can I see what I mean? He was sitting with my personal belongings, right? I'm in the water. I walk out. Two constables walk up. They say, mate, we believe you've got drugs. Can we search your stuff? I said, yes, mate. Get Stop swearing. Well, that was different. Something you don't see every day. The man was charged with possession of illegal substances. He was later sentenced to four months in jail. It never rains on Bondi postcards, but as a massive southerly storm rolls in, beachgoers see a different side of Bondi. As lifeguards patrol the beach, Danny spots a distressed boy wandering along the sand. Poor little kid just running on the back of the beach here. Looks like he's terrified. <laughs> Poor little thing. Making his way back this way, which is him. Well, the kid's just screaming out for his dad, but uh, he doesn't want me to get near him, so I just gotta try and somehow talk to him and then find his dad. As a father himself, Terry knows what the boy's parents must feel. Mate, it's the like heaviest feeling when you lose your kid. It's heavy. It's unbelievable to catch through your head. With a storm rolling in, a lost boy on Bondi Beach gets scared every time Danny approaches him. All Danny can do is follow. Maxie waits at the ramp to stop the boy leaving the beach. So we're going to get see the bike here? Yeah. We're here to help you find your daddy, all right? Find your daddy. Do you want to come with me and we'll help you find your dad? Is that OK? Come on, mate. Got him, Maxie? Yeah. Eventually, the lifeguards win his trust. You all right, mate? Yeah, I reckon we come from that way, so let it go. Back that come way. Come back, come for a ride? The boy's name is Justin. Safe in Maxie's arms, the search is now on for Justin's dad. The southerly storm is only minutes from hitting Bondi. Look at that. Is there anything 
they need to do before this weather comes up. Uh, Fashing no down. Fashing uh, down or... Uh, here it comes, bro. As the beach empties, Justin's father still can't be found. Why is there someone running around like a maniac just freaking out? Meanwhile, Chapo warns beachgoers about the dangers of lightning on a wide open beach. There's actually two counts of people being hit by lightning. One was three years ago, right basically where we were standing in front of the tower. The guy, poor bloke, was struck by lightning. You know, it's not very nice when it happens. It's actually it's unbelievable when it happened. I was there last time. It's one of the most unbelievable experiences I've ever had. At least we got him back to life, so, you know, it was very emotional. Justin can't describe his parents or remember where they were. All lifeguards can search for are parents in distress. Finally, a man reports his son is missing. Hey buddy, what was he actually wearing? Ninja Turtle bottom, Spider-Man top. Yeah, ATV, can you return to the tower? We've found the lost father. Over. How'd you lose him, mate? He just wandered off. Yeah, just kept right. on going when I called him. He just he went for the blue board. Yeah, right. You gotta keep a better eye on those kids, mate. He just won. And I called him, he looked at me, and kept on going. And then when I grabbed the other one to go and get him, he's gone. He's in the crowd and lost. I should, I should look more terrified, but I'm not, because he does it all the time. So I'm just I've got to be casual, otherwise he'll get upset. It doesn't even know what happened, do you? What happened? You get lost. Did you get lost? Yeah. Was that a bad thing? Yeah. And what should you do if you get lost? What do you do? Just go to the tower if you get lost. That's right, go to the tower, or who do you tell otherwise? The lifeguard. The lifeguard, that's right. Do you want to go shake the lifeguard's hand, please? Say thank you. Maxie hasn't just reunited a family, He's made some new friends. Hello, me. Hi. Next on Bondi Rescue. Actually, go. Go. On. No, sir, we broke. We broke straight out. A not so happy Australia Day. Mate, he's going under. Agony in the tower. Oh. <laughs> Predators in the water. Look at that shark out there. Just had a go at a bloke. Oh. Really? And letting off steam in the shallows. I suppose I am a natural, yeah. 